Roughly around 5,000 people die while on the job each year in the U.S. Around 40% are due to traffic accidents while in transport. Another slice comes from slips and falls, but a select few are caused by heavy machinery or really unusual circumstances. Here are five cases where people suffer disturbing and unusual deaths while on the job. This content may be upsetting to some, viewer discretion advised. This is a nightmare. When workers fall into a silo with flowing grains or soybeans, they can sink to the bottom. Just one foot of grain can offer 300 pounds of crushing, suffocating pressure. Once all the way under, you can find yourself beneath dozens to hundreds of tons. That's exactly what happened to the man in this video. It was just another day of work. He was helping to unload soybeans into the silo when catastrophe struck. One moment you could see him, and the next, he was gone. By the time rescue arrived, there was no sign of life, no subtle movement to indicate that he was conscious or alive, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't. Depending on what you are trapped in, your ability to move can be seriously compromised. Just imagine the horror. Every muscle in your body is squealing in agony. There's an immense squeezing fire as every inch cramps and aches. Panic swirls around in your head as you realize that you can barely breathe. All of that pressure is preventing your chest from expanding. In fact, the first time that you suck in air, soybeans will push hard against your chest wall. And now there's no room. You are completely entombed. It took Rescue 10 hours to reach him. It was such a tricky effort that they had to call in other agencies to assist, and it was long too late. It's unclear how long he was alive, but people have survived for several hours while trapped before. Sadly, around three quarters of all rescues end up being body recoveries. This freak tragedy didn't just claim one life or two, but three. It took place on a breathtaking family-ran vineyard in Italy in 1987. They grew rows and rows of grapes to harvest and ferment. Unfortunately, they underestimated the dangers of this occupation. In order to produce large batches of wine, a good ventilation system is key. This is due to the fact that the fermentation process produces carbon dioxide. Additionally, you can become impaired from just the alcohol fumes and rapidly. One person was attempting to stir a jumbo vat of fermenting grape juice. He became nauseous and oh so woozy, falling into the deep, sticky fluid. At first, he tried to flail, but his head felt like it was going to pop and his muscles began to seize up. Another family member noticed the commotion and sprung to action, but he too was struck with blankets of haze. He tried to lean over to grab hold of the drowning man, but gave in to gravity, making a large splash into the juice. Finally, a third family member attempted to launch a rescue. She tried to do her best to save the men, but breathed in the same dangerous vapors. It was like a devastating game of dominoes. Soon, she was the last body to desperately kick and fight, but it wasn't long before she drowned too. By the time rescue arrived, it was long too late. All three had died after aspirating big gulps of wine into their lungs. The presence of carbon dioxide likely accelerated the effects of drowning. Hal worked for a sanitation company that was contracted out to provide services for industrial factories. One such place was an Oregon-based meat packaging facility. Little did Hal know that this particular place had a bad reputation for failing to follow protocol. One night, Hal and his crew were assigned to this facility, each member given a different task. His task was to clean a large meat blender. This didn't worry him. He was told time and time again that all machines were locked and properly covered. He got up on a stepladder, bent over the opening, and began cleaning. Suddenly, he was straight startled by an ear-aching, thundering metal-on-metal -metal sound. It was screeching, whirling, and buzzing all around him. Something tripped the machine, turning it on. The startle tragically sent him tumbling right into the blender. Another employee nearby was also startled by the abrupt sound. He approached the blender, but as he got closer, he realized it wasn't just the machine he was hearing. There were gut-wrenching, animalistic, blood-curdling screams emanating from inside. He slammed the emergency stop button, but it was too late. Hal was no longer whole. His pieces were entangled in the rotating blades that were just now slowing to a stop. It looked like an explosion of mangled bone, brain matter, and bits of soft tissue. It only took seconds for him to transform from a screaming man to basically inside out. First responders had to have the entire machine taken apart in order to retrieve majority of his body, and it took nearly 12 hours. The year was 2007 in Phoenix, Arizona, and on a sunny, hot July day, the leading news story was a high-speed chase, but this doesn't end how you'd expect. In the era of 24-7 news capability, anything that offers viewers hits of adrenaline that might end bloody must be covered live at all costs. 
Two sets of journalists from competing news stations fired up their helicopters and got in the air as soon as possible to offer live aerial footage of police making chase of a runaway criminal. At this time, pilots often doubled as field reporters, which sounds to me like they had way too many responsibilities. This proved catastrophic. At around 12.46 in the afternoon, both helicopters collided mid-air. The impact was immense and could be heard on the ground. It caused both choppers to rapidly plummet towards Earth. There was black smoke and furious flames erupting like a detonating bomb. All four journalists died, likely at the moment that they impacted the ground. This quickly overshadowed the high-speed chase and other news choppers in the air changed direction so that they could be the first to cover the catastrophe. This is easily one of the most horrific deaths ever suffered. In 1942, something unimaginable occurred in a coal mine in China. This mine was once operated jointly by China and Japan, but Japan slowly gained full control. As a result, laborers were captured and forced to work in terrible conditions. Food was scarce, supplies were faulty, and shoes worn out and often the wrong size. On April 26, a huge gas explosion rang out from one of the shafts. Instead of launching a rescue, guards barricaded the opening. Terrified loved ones who rushed to the scene were shoved away. What was going on inside would exceed your worst nightmares. The mine began to cave in around the men as a fire raged. Workers desperately searched for an area free from flames, but soon there was no such place. Officials decided to completely seal up the mine in hopes of starving the fire of oxygen. This ensured that nobody would be coming out alive from that hellhole. Can you imagine the panic as dirt and rocks smash into you and your flesh shrivels, splits, and weeps? Every nerve is squealing and sizzling pain. You can't draw in a deep breath. You know it's the end, but your body keeps fighting. In total, this disaster killed 1,549 miners. 